Hey guys, this is Rira. I come to talk to you about what I have either read in the blogs, watched on TV, or heard in these streets. Today it is about what I have watched on TV. We are talking about 90 Day Fiance, The Other Way, Season 4, Episode 12, I believe. Yes, I believe we are further along. We got two episodes left after this episode, and then on to the reunion. So, if you are new to my channel, my name is Ree, where I do reviews on different reality shows, as well as talk about the latest topics in the blogs or in the news. Lately, I've been focused on the TV shows right now on recaps, but I will get back to the blogs. But if you like anything that you hear, make sure you like comment and subscribe i definitely want you guys to come back for more so definitely subscribe and also comment i want to hear all of your thoughts i love reading your thoughts i love reading your feedback on everything so make sure you stick around okay let's get started i'm going to keep this as short as i possibly can we're going to get straight to the meat and the potatoes with things and you know just move forward with it so let's go ahead and let's get gabe and isabel out of the way okay Gabe is back in Florida. He meets with his mom and sister. Side note, mom and sister are drop dead gorgeous. Beautiful women. Okay, just absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, he tells them that he is getting engaged. The sister seems to be very much negative, very much of a, uh, what if this, what if that, what if this. Um, I, I have a family member just like that. And I have a hard time telling them things as well because it's just like, who asked for all of that? Like, this is not the time to say any of that. Like, it's just, I don't know. Like, the sister has a weird way of doing things. But whatever, he tells them. She drops him back off at the airport for her, him to get back to Columbia. And the end of that. Let's get to Danielle and Johan. Okay. Danielle, against her husband's wishes or even consideration, decides that she is still going to meet with her ex-friend. I don't even care to remember the friend's name. I do not remember his name. But it's a, a friend, and I use that word very lightly. Like the friend said that um, basically they had a little rendezvous in Florida for five months, and then both of them went back to their lives, right? Like he's just like, I consider her more of a mentor. Like she taught me some things. What? Like I don't know. Like there's something weird when he said that. Like, yes, you should learn from each person that you deal with. But there was something about that that gave me like, you know, motherly with benefits. I don't know. But, you know, whatever. So she's telling the friend about how Johan doesn't care to meet him. And the friend is just like, oh, man, like, why? Like, I mean, I'm a cool guy, this and that. Dude used to used to be all in his wife. And I mean that literally speaking. Um, so she tells him that, you know, Johan is just not the same person that she that he was before she moved out there. Uh, the same can be said for you, Danielle. Like, her lack of accountability and just... Being able to project is just really just, it's so overwhelming for me. But let's move on. Let's get to Nicole and my mood. Okay. Nicole has decided that her friend, Naron, that um, she introduced my mood to, she's like, you know what? I don't want to be her friend anymore because, you know, she came off kind of aggressive. You know, Let me tell you what I think. I think that her and my mood had a big old argument when they got home and he told her, listen, I don't want you being friends with this person no more. Okay. And it's like an or else type of situation, but I also don't want you bringing this up on camera because we all know that my mood is about what it looks like on TV. Okay. There's no way you can convince me otherwise. And so now Nicole, it's like, you know what? She was kind of aggressive with him and you know, um, it was just too much. You brought her there to go and challenge the way that the average uh muslim uh egyptian man thinks okay that's what you brought her there for and she did that she was not aggressive she she spoke her part mahmoud spoke his part part he he didn't agree with her part and that should be the end of that but you know what, Naran is better off not dealing with you, Nicole, and all of your, I want to go, I want to stay, I want to go, I want to stay. Which leads me to our next point. She decides to go grocery shopping with Fatima because Fatima is just like, hey, I'm going to show you a good time. And what's a good time? No, it's not going to the mall and going shopping. What's a good time? No, it's not going out to eat and like, you know, having a couple of cocktails or even mocktails. What's a good time? No, it's not going to the movies or whatnot or seeing an entertainment. No, a good time for Fatima is going to the outdoor market where they go and they search 
for um, vegetables that are still good um, to eat, okay? That is what she considers a good time. And that was enough for Nicole to say, you know what? Get me back to America, okay? So she sits my mood down and says, I want to go back to America and I want you to come with me. And my mood is just like, uh, honestly, I don't got no plans of going to America because I don't even know how I will function in my way, in the way of living. Like, I don't know um, the way of living there. Well, isn't that what Nicole has been screaming this whole time? That she wasn't sure about the way of living and how to adjust to the way of living in Egypt, okay? And now you're realizing as well, well I don't know how to adjust to the way of living of America, yet you married this American girl. You know what? Let me address something also while I have you guys on the line. Okay, first off, we wrapped up with Nicole and my mood. Let's move on. But let me say this in reference to these American couples who act off of impulse like Nicole, um, like Chris. You know, um, it, it, it's, it's more so of... You guys signed up for these things, right? You guys... Decided to take yourself out there and, you know, commit, and I use that term very loosely, to a way of living and to a, a, a relationship with someone. You even brought us along this journey while being on our TV screen, and now you got all of these complaints. I'm just, I'm sick of you guys. I really am. But, you know, whatever. We move on. Let's get down to the next person. Let's get to Jen and Reesh. Okay. Okay. So, Jen, after we, well, Rishi, sorry guys, because I know you guys corrected me last episode of, it's Rishi, it's Rishi. Well, Jen and Rishi, okay, well, after Rishi conf confesses to her group of girlfriends that, hey, my parents actually did bring girls around for me to uh, look, look into marriage with, you know, Jen walks off, Jen's just like, listen, I'm really over this relationship. I can be done with it. Like, his stories don't add up. His, even her girlfriends are like, his stories don't add up. Add up. He, he's not a good communicator. We don't know what's going on. But then one of her girlfriends says, listen, I was an interventionalist, you know, self-proclaimed interventionalist. And I feel like, you know, even though it was a different atmosphere, it was more so along the lines of drugs, um, I feel that, you know, I can still use those skills here and maybe we can tell Rishi's parents about you and about plans to marry you. Y'all are overstepping your boundaries. I can never be disinvested into one of my girlfriend's relationship to the point where, hey, I will tell his parents who do I think I am? Like, who do you guys think you are to do something like that? But Jen is so weak. <laughs> and Jen is just like, sure, that's a wonderful idea. And, and, and she mentions interventionalist in a way of, yeah, this makes me qualify. It's like somebody saying, hey, I've worked in finance, but yeah, this lady that's going into labor, instead of me calling 911, I think I'm qualified to deliver the baby. With my finance degree? What? I'm just... Girl, your intervention skills is best used on someone like Chris, okay? It is not used on Arishi and Jamie. I, I mean, Arishi and Jen. But let's get down to Chris and Jamie, okay? Speaking of them. So, we start off with Chris speaking to her mother. And what I am noticing is that Chris and Jamie have two very different um, different recollections of their situation and the stories that have taken place. And it's one of those things where it's like a she say, she say, where you will have to get them both in a room to see what story actually is the truth. Okay, because Jen is saying to her mom that, listen, this girl didn't win, quit her job. She makes no effort of trying to get another job. And all of the bills are on me. She's ungrateful. You know, um, I gave her $1,000 last month. She's telling me that it's not enough. Talk about that she's going to pawn my father's ashes, you know, that I left back there. And, you know, the mother's like, listen, she's a sugar baby and you're her sugar mama. Sugar what? And... Sugar baby, sugar mama, and Chris have no business in the same sentence. Stop playing, mom. I know we are supposed to think very highly of our children, but I need you to stop playing right now. Something is not even adding up at all, all right? First of all, 
no, no, no. We didn't get down to Jamie where she's talking to one of her friends. And she's saying, listen, at this point, this woman has been gone for five months. Okay, five months. Don't even answer my phone call. Don't even respond to text. Stop paying the bills on like the second or third month. And this is an apartment that she chose. She laid out the type of apartment she wanted, and that was it. And in reference to the job situation, she wanted me to quit my job so I can focus on the business. And then she comes back later, why aren't you working? Why aren't you helping me work? Okay, I, I'm starting to feel like the truth is somewhere in between. It is somewhere in between. Jamie, I don't care what Chris said. You had no business quitting that job, but you knowing that it is tough to find work in Colombia for you as a Venezuelan woman. You had no business quitting your job for that reason and also for the reason that Chris, like your friend has said, has already shown you signs that she is a runner. She is a track star. She is going to run when the times get hard. Okay, that's a song for you guys that don't know. Okay, <laughs> you know, like... You had no business quitting your job for those reasons. And then you said that you quit it. She wanted you to quit the focus on the business. You guys have not started the business. You guys have not purchased the bus. You guys have not formed the LLC or whatever it may be called in Columbia. So why would you quit? That makes no sense to me. At all. And now she is to take on the bulk. Of the bills. Okay. Like it's. I have no sympathy for you Jamie. In regards to this. is because Chris has already shown you who she was. Before she even brought her tail out there. So I have no sympathy for you. Chris. I have none for you. Now listen. You're saying that you know. You sent her things. And you know. Um, she was looking at Pawnee. The ashes girl. How much do you think she going to get for, for another man's dead ashes. Right? Like, I'm guessing the, the necklace that it came in, but knowing, knowing Chris, it probably didn't cost that much for the necklace that it came in. Like, I just don't know when it comes to this couple. It's all over the place, but there were too many signs, just like your friend said, uh, Jamie. There were too many signs for this. So, you know, we're going to move on. Okay. But, no, but before we move on. Chris does say that she will be returning soon. Okay, now we're moving on. Let's get to the meat and the potato. Osama and Debbie. All right. Debbie wakes up in Osama's family home. She is just like, what in the heck? The um, interior design is gross. It's disgusting. The steps, I don't see how anyone doesn't break their neck. Well, Debbie, you decided to move out there. So you claim to move out there before you even taken a look at what was around and where you will be staying and what would be going on. And the fact that you didn't bring yourself back to America when that man told you that he didn't tell you that he didn't want you moving out there permanently because, you know, uh, he wanted y'all to get to know each other. You should have brought your tail back to America. What you doing going down to the house? But anyway, she wakes up inside the house. And as she's inside the house, she goes and, um, you know, the parent, the father and the sister, they're welcoming her and things. They're acting like they're so excited to see her. And they end up stating out that, yeah, you know, um, apparently she's to bring Osama back to America. You see, that was Osama's plan all along. That's why he said that he didn't tell you anything because he wanted to get you out there. Osama's been running two different stories to both you and his family. See, Osama thought that him reading dumb whack poems was enough to get Debbie to commit to bringing him to America. All right. And this is what he has told his family. And that is why his family, they smiling and everything, acting like they accepted Debbie, even though the mother in the last episode gave her that look like, what the heck is this? Which always really confirmed to us that there was an underlying plan. And the sister outlays that plan, assuming that Debbie knew it. Debbie looking like that was not my plan. Like my plan was to stay in the U.S. In, I mean, here in Morocco. That is my plan. I never said to this man that I would be bringing him to the States. And Assam is sitting next to her, looking every in which direction, like he has done nothing wrong. Now the two of them go off because they're supposed to go to a secluded area to paint. Debbie runs into a donkey. She starts singing to the donkey. I'm like, girl, what the heck is this? But anyways, they sit down to paint and she's like, listen, let's 
discuss some things. He's like, I don't want to discuss nothing. I just want to paint. I'm sick of discussing with you. See, the real assignment is about to come out because he can't play the nice guy anymore, even though he barely paid it on the first on their first interaction when he told him that he tricked her to get her there. But whatever. Now he's like bringing it all out. He's like, listen, I don't want to talk. I don't want to diss, I don't want to dead. You see, because now he realizes that this woman don't want to bring him to America. She really is thinking of living here. And she's like, we need to talk about our plans. I don't want to talk about that. I'm sick of talking about that. I mean, you you, you got to be mentally ill or something because I'm, I'm sick of telling you that I'm sick of talking about it. Every day it's a talk about this, talk about that. I'm over it. She's like, well, you're, you're treating me wrong and this is not okay. And I'm trying to figure out what we're doing. He finally goes and says to her, look. Let me tell you what's going to happen. You are going to bring me to the U.S. where I will work, where I will build a future, where I can eventually bring my sister over, where I can bring my papa and my mama over, okay? And if you don't, then we can end this right here, right now, because I ain't got no other plans to deal with you. That's all I want to deal with you about. That's it, right? And Debbie is acting like she is shocked. Debbie, the moment that you got off that plane and he told you he had no plans of marrying you and that y'all need to get to know each other and that he didn't tell you that beforehand because he wanted you to bring your tail up out there. Osama is not a human being person, meaning that he, he's already said to us he does not like human interactions. Osama is just not a nice person. He tried to play it coy for, for a little bit, realized Debbie wasn't down with the plan and said, okay, cool enough, say less. Bring me to the States or take yourself back to the States and you go on about your business. But I'm done with you, old lady. I'm done with you. And that is literally how we leave this episode, guys. So let me know your thoughts. I want to hear your thoughts. Osama is an awful individual. Um, Chris and Jamie, do we feel bad for either of them? I do not feel bad for Jamie. She had no business quitting that job, girl. You knew good and well the economy of Colombia. You knew that you were a Venezuelan woman living out there. And you knew good and well that you could not depend on Chris. I want to hear y'all thoughts in regards to that. You know, um, and let me know if you guys think that Jen's friend, friends are out of line for overstepping. Um, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I can't wait to hear from you guys again. Love you guys. Bye.